Hey, hi, this is Olivier and you're watching the Internet of Things show. Today we have Emmanuel with us to discuss storage on the edge, on the IoT edge devices, right? Yeah. Hello, Olivier. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming. So why is it so important to actually be able to store data on devices in an IoT scenario? Well, it's, an, it's, it's super important whenever uh, your connectivity is limited. Uh, but so, first, before discussing uh, SQL storage, I'd like just to do a quick recap um, of the um, options that are already available out of the box with Azure IoT Edge Runtime. Okay, in terms, in of, terms of storage. Storing data. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it. Uh, so, you've got two storage options out of the box. One is a sto store and forward option. Okay. So, when you send telemetry to the cloud um, through Edge Hub, Okay. Um, the Hedge Hub will take care of persisting those messages while the connectivity is down mm -hmm. and of sending all those messages as soon as the connectivity is back up. Okay. And the second mechanism is uh, the storage, storage uh, mechanism is a twin. Okay. Um, so through the twin, you can um, use it to, to um, download some pretty lightweight configuration data. Okay. Uh, so whenever you want to tell, to, to track where a device is, like a device is in, in a one building, in one location, in mm -hmm. one room, then for this type of configuration data, twins are perfect. Okay. And as soon as you need something more advanced than that for your storage needs, uh, then you should bring your own um, storage solutions. Okay. And that's what we'll look at today. Okay. And uh, SQL Server is a, is a great option for that. Okay. Uh, so it comes in several flavors, SQL Server Enterprise, SQL Server Express. Uh, and actually, the same steps would also work with other relational databases like MySQL or okay. PostgreSQL. Okay. And so you bring that storage solution as a module in your IoT Edge solution, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. That's what we'll see, yeah. Okay. Well, you want to show us? Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, just to summarize some use cases on, on how oh, to yeah. use SQL um, Server at okay, the edge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I'll give you three, three examples. So one is to store time series data uh, mm -hmm. at the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, so the oil and gas industry does that a lot. And okay. they, want, they, they often, often are in a remote uh, locations okay. and want to store and visualize their time series data uh, while locally. offline. Okay. Locally. Well, yeah. offline. Okay. Uh, in the agriculture space, that's another example uh, where they want to um, farms are pretty often often have a limited connection as well, and they want to keep all the application data local, okay. so that farmers could uh, see maps of their fields mm -hmm. locally, enhanced with all the data from their sensors. Okay. Right. Um, and the last one maybe is a black box scenario, mm -hmm. where uh, whenever um, complex piece of equipment fails, um, you, you to be able to diagnose this one, yeah. a typical pattern is to have a black box uh, mm -hmm. that like keeps all the, like, like, like for airplanes planes, okay. or connected cars mm -hmm. or in oil and gas, that's also pretty widely used. Okay. And so to keep like a sliding window of all the telemetry um, being recorded by those equipment okay. uh, so that whenever it fails, you can really s deep dive into what happens. Okay, yeah. makes sense. All right. Yeah, awesome. Um, so let's uh, look at how this works. Yep. Uh, so let's imagine that we've got some telemetry um, data being sent by some equipment here. Okay. And so our telemetry module uh, gets all this telemetry and sends it to another uh, module, okay. a measure function here, uh, that, that has all the business logic. Okay. And so one thing that we're, we're doing I in this demo is using this Azure function to structure the data and prepare it to send it to a relational database. Okay. So format it into some tables and columns. Yeah, so you have right. row data, timestamps coming from the devices. Yeah. You bring it and say, okay, I need to store that in my relational database yeah. here locally. Yeah. Right? And the function does that. Okay. Correct. Okay. Uh, another pattern that I'd like to mention is the communication pattern between our Azure function and a certain module with our, our SQL database. And so instead of using traditional messaging communication uh, mm -hmm. between those two modules, this time we'll use um, the bridge network, okay. which comes out of the box with Azure IT Edge, okay. and to 
to so that we can open a TCP connection between our Azure function module and between the, the SQL Server module. Okay. So that way, uh, you'll see in the code, you can just open a connection from the um, Azure function directly to the um, to the SQL Server module. I, I can see how things are opening up because considering that the uh, IT Edge modules are Docker containers, yep. and now if you can open through the IT Edge infrastructure that TCP bridge then actually can open up for way more than just the SQL yeah. you know, scenario yeah, you're yeah. showing here, right? Yeah, lots of options. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but like, let's keep it focused now. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah. The last thing I'd like to mention, the last pattern I'd like to mention today is, um, is uh, volume containers. Okay. So whenever you, you build a database, you ob obviously want to keep this data and persist this data. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you don't want this data to go away whenever you restart a container or reset your container, right? Okay. Uh, super important for databases to, mm -hmm. to keep the data. Yeah, and well, so especially the in, in IoT scenarios. Especially in the, the scenarios that we just discussed. Power, a reboot, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, and so the way to do that is to use a concept called volume container. Okay. Uh, so you essentially mount your SQL volume uh, with a volume container. Um, and the volume container is mapped to uh, your host file systems. Okay. And so that way, all the your database files are written directly on the host. On the hard drive. On the hard drive. Okay. And they stay there, and okay. in case of, of an issue, you can, you can go back to, to those files. Okay, and I guess you need to scale your hardware and local storage and so on based on the requirements of your solution, yeah. obviously, yeah, right? obviously, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing right. happens magically, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you can show us. Okay, right. let's <laughs> dive into the code. Because I was burning stats just before, but yeah, let's, let's see the demo. All right, so I'm starting from the Azure Function tutorial. Okay. Uh, so what I have running here... For IoT Edge. So for IoT Edge. Running an Azure Function on IoT Edge, step by step, that's all documented, and that's where you started, okay. Yeah. Good. Got it. And so here, on the, I, I love this uh, Docker extension here because I can see all my Docker containers running on this machine. Okay, cool. And so, so that's the local instance of IoT Edge running on your, on your device right now. Yes. Okay. And so I've got four containers, two, uh, the Edge Hub and the Edge, run and the, um, Agent? Edge Agent, yeah. which uh, makes the uh, Azure IoT Edge runtime. And one uh, module that simulates uh, telemetry. Okay. The our temp sensor module. Yeah, that's the one that comes in the tutorial by the Yeah, in all okay. our tutorials. Yeah. And uh, the Azure function from the tutorial as well. So let's good. see. So far, so good. Um, let's see in a command line um, the data that it is sending. And yeah, so okay. uh, it's logging uh, messages. Um, so th these are all the messages that have been sent in the last two minutes. Okay. So we can see that it, it's flowing. Okay. Got it. Uh, all right, so now let's add a, a SQL server to this solution, right? Uh, so I'll look, here's my Azure function code. Actually, I'll close this. Um, and what I'll do is I'll add some code here. And what this code does is uh, it, it has a um, um, connection string to okay. open a connection with our um, SQL Server module. Okay. Uh, one thing to note here is that you don't need to refer it to uh, through an IP. You can just use a con my module name or your container name. Okay. So in our case, I'll call it SQL. Mm -hmm. And so that's convenient because then you don't need to deal with uh, what is the IP of my module. Mm. And, you, and Docker takes care of the name resolution for you. So okay. that, that's pretty handy. Nice. Yeah. So I'm opening up a SQL connection here. And then um, from I'm passing the temperature data from my, the, my message coming okay. in. Okay, which is uh, JSON, right? JSON, JSON coming yeah. in. Same as uh, so the other tutorials. Okay. And then I'm inserting, I've got some insert statement here mm -hmm. uh, that will insert this data into my, my SQL database. Okay. All right. So pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So let's uh, build our container. All right. Pick the location. So it's pick the location. Yeah. And then you pick the, 
the registry you're gonna push it to, right? Yes. Like if I remember correctly, my I, yeah. did, my, I did my homework. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, it's built. I'm pushing it with the tag with SQL. Okay. Yeah, we see everything happening live. Yeah. All right, so now we've got our Azure function container ready in our uh, container registry okay. in the cloud. And we'll deploy this container to our Edge device. Okay. All right. Um, so here is our here's the deployment file from the Azure function tutorial. Okay. Um, but we'll uh, add a couple modules to it. And okay. so we'll add a um, SQL module. Okay. So you're doing that in JSON directly from here. So yes. you could do that in the Azure portal. The other option is to go to the portal. Yeah. Um, but you are hardcore. You prefer doing that in JSON, like that. Well, it, it's. Uh, <laughs> I find it easier in my for my developer workflow when yep. you need to iterate Makes and try several things. Okay. Um, so here I've got my Azure function as well, and so things that I like to point out here are the, the create options that we are using uh, when when creating our SQL container, and the interesting piece is uh, this. Mount option here. Okay. And so what it says is that it says create a volume container mm -hmm. that is named SQL volume um, on and that is mapped to uh, this pass on the oh. host OS. Okay. So and that's, that's how you, you, you create your persistence layer. Got it. Um, okay. For your, your so database. So it's just a configuration of the module of the Docker container actually uh, for SQL that, yep. that when it mounts actually sets that bridge or that connection. Love it. Okay. Yep. All right. So now let's uh, deploy uh, to my SQL on Edge yeah. device. I like the way you're using the uh, IoT Edge extension for VS Code. Yes. To uh, do all the work of interacting with IoT Hub, actually. Yeah. It's awesome. Find it really convenient. Let's restart as well. It's part of our deployment process. Yep. And, and so, yeah, I use those, those extensions all the time here. This is an IoT Edge extension yeah. that lists all my devices connected to my IoT Hub mm -hmm. um, and that lists all the containers running on, on a particular device. Nice. And you use the uh, Docker one to really like, focus on the Docker aspects of things. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I usually do a right click on the Docker container to see logs that appear in VS Code. Super yeah. practical. Hey, you're yeah. done already. And I'm done already, and yes. we can see the, the red dots becoming turning green here. Uh, so nice. meaning that all the containers are soon uh, all up and running. Nice. One more to go. Um, and here we go. Here we go. All right. Uh, so in theory, if I followed, you have your temp sensor creating data. You have the Azure function is now taking that data and pushing that into the SQL database correct. that is local on your Edge correct. device. Okay. The only piece missing now is we need to create an actual database and create a table uh, in our SQL server. Because okay. now what we've done is just uh, um, creating a blank SQL server, right? And you need to configure it and to put your data into your okay, relational database. Okay, okay. So that's what we'll be doing right now. All right. Uh, so the way I'll be doing this is I'll be opening a command line and we'll connect to my SQL container. So we have a tutorial, like the one you're looking into right now is an online tutorial on drmicro.com yes. for IT Edge that describes how to do that, right? So people exactly. who are watching this video can then go there and, and do it themselves. Yeah. Okay. And so what I'm doing is uh, opening a, a, a bash command on my SQL container. Okay. So that I can run the SQL command tool that mm -hmm. comes with a SQL uh, server. And now uh, I can create my database through this SQL command tool. Okay. Uh, it's a bit painful to copy paste, but stay with me. I'm here, not moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. <sighs> Sorry. Let's, let's try again. <laughs> All right, just copy pasting here. 
And so what this uh, does is that it creates a database, but it creates it at a very specific path. Okay. Actually, I took the wrong one. I should be using the Linux version. Good catch. And that's related to your connection to the mounted volume, right? Yes. Okay. I really don't want to type this manually. Oh, here you go. Yeah, we'll edit that. Don't worry. Yay. All right, so now I've created my database. I will create a table as well. So what was happening before you had create? So you had the um, edge runtime is running, right? So it's tr the function is trying to send the data to the database, but because the table is not created, it's failing. It's just failing, yeah. and okay, we would track that if we were following the logs of the Azure function yeah. mo module. Okay, got it. Creating my table here. Um, so now let's see. So in theory, in theory. Crossing fingers, knocking words. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so now all the, the data being sent from our other function to the SQL database should go directly in the, into the table that we've just created. Okay. So let's look. Let's query this table and see if it has any data. Okay. Going to roll some drum. And here I've got Couple of rows. Let's see. And Yay. we can see that the data is flowing. Data is flowing. And if I query again, probably get some extra rows here. Nice. Eight rows instead of Cool. Six. So we're filling in our database. Um, do we have a notion of actually dealing with the size of that database, rolling data, making sure we're not uh, overflowing well, memory? Well, you have to be considerate uh, when you you choose your hardware. Okay. Um, and you have to like dimension to, to look at the dimensions of um, uh, how much space mm -hmm. would you need uh, to not like explode your device. Yeah. yeah, and I would assume that your function could be smart enough to say, yeah. hey, if it's that amount, remove the oldest values of down that database, right? Yeah, correct. And you can query your database and see how much memory is left yeah. and um, and and have all this business log logic into okay. your Azure function. And um, last question: that container that you used for SQL, yep. it's already published, already available. Already published, and so it's available for Windows, for Linux, and um, on x64 and x86 architectures. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, thanks for that introduction to storage on IT Edge, Emmanuel. Hope well, to thanks, see you soon. Olivier.